Welcome to this small presentation on heat transfer enhancement by nanofluid. First of all, uh, I would like to thank and welcome everyone for this presentation. So, I uh, will be looking uh, in this uh, specifically in this presentation. We'll be looking uh, on other aspects such as uh, what are nanofluids, what are the types of nanofluids, uh, its synthesis applications, its thin thermal conductivity property of non nanofluid and also some overviews on uh, best experiments presented and its results we'll be looking after its effects uh, based on parameter on thermal conductivity since uh, the very first subject which we will be discussing is heat transfer by uh, and its enhancements by nanofluids we'll also discuss its mechanism of heat transfer uh, and its improvement We'll discuss conventional solid liquid suspension compared to nanofluids. We will be providing strong reasons why to choose nanofluids and its application applications. Obviously, we will list out companies and firms which are actually using nanofluids and are getting a really good results. We'll also discuss its conclusion and its future scope. So without any further ado, let us start. So. Uh, I'd like to tell about myself. My name is Devin Padley and this is my presentation overall. So nanofluids are solid liquid composite materials ha which has the ability to transfer heat across a small temperature difference which enhances the efficiency of energy conversion and improves the design of, of automobile engines, ST devices and micro electro mech systems. Now, uh, let me tell you what are actually nanofluids. So, nanofluid is a fluid containing nanometer sized particles called nanoparticles. These fluids are engineered colloidal suspensions of nanoparticles in place fluid. Now, uh, let's quickly discuss about its types and uh, we'll then see the synthesis. So, in terms of types, uh, we have uh, nanoparticles based uh, as ceramic pure metallic alloy and carbon so while synthesizing these non nanofluids we use two method one is one step method and the other one is two step method while application while making the application of one step method we have direct evaporation condensation then we have chemical vapor decomposition uh, deposition then we have single step chemical synthesis in two step method we use physical chemical and laser technologies now uh, let us discuss about uh, thermal conductivity of nanofluids as you can see uh, right on the board there are material and then there is thermal conductivity so let me let us discuss this so when it comes to metallic uh, we have a uh, values given for aluminum which is 237 copper is 401 gold is 318 and silver is 429 with respect to non-metallic uh, fluids it is a bit high and bit low for few materials so let's discuss with alumina so alumina is 40 as compared to any of uh, other we have got carbon nanotubes and diamond which really have a high thermal conductivity which is 3000 and 3300 comparatively then we have copper oxide which is 76.50 which is uh, lower uh, and alumina is obviously more lower so we have silicon at 148 then we have some liquids as well uh, let's discuss with liquids so the highest ratio is of water so water has a high thermal conductivity which is 0.61 then we have the lowest which is in engine oil which has 0.14 and then we have ethylene glycol with 0.20 and glycerol with 0.29 now uh, let me discuss uh, some best experimental results okay so this is uh, right on your board so as you can see we have nanoparticles listed and then we have base fluid which we used our nanoparticles with then we have uh, a figure a ratio a percentage of increase in thermal conductivity and then its application so let me discuss it with one by one so we have uh, a particularly known as fe3o4 which is uh, ferric oxide uh, which we if we use with water it increases thermal conductivity to 70 percent and it is used in hybrid powered engines now let me tell you about uh, the 
top most uh, nanoparticles used which is mwcntas uh, which is used with poly uh, pol, uh, poly uh, oil and which gives us an increase in uh, thermal conductivity to whopping of 160 percentage and it is mainly used in air conditionings then we have polyaniline nanofibers which if we used with water it gives 140 percent of uh, increase in thermal conductivity and it is obviously used in opti electronic uh, sensing devices then we have uh, uh, when then we have a compound with uh, which we used with titanium so it is TiO3 uh, which if we used with water it gives a good percentage increase of 30 to 33 uh, which is uh, moderate in this uh, category uh, as supposed same as aluminum oxide which is automatic which is also uh, used with base fluids at automatic transmission oil so yeah even this gives 30 uh, percent same with again uh, you know a uh, aluminum oxide if used with trim e709 emulizer as compound then again we get a decrease in its temperature now the lowest is uh, cuo which is a uh, compound of copper now if copper uh, and its uh, compound used uh, copper oxide if for example if we used it uh, with ethylene glycol it gives uh, as a good efficiency and good increase in uh, not not good increase it is actually the lowest which is 12 percent increase in thermal conductivity and obviously its application could be used in vehicle thermal uh, management so uh, i guess uh, by so far you have got uh, a good idea huh? like how uh, these compounds if used uh, you know nanoparticles if used with these compounds uh, with ba with its uh, experimented base fluids can give us a good insight of how it can be managed and how things could be more and more effective now let us discuss uh, about effects of some parameters on thermal conductivity of uh, nanofluids so the very first uh, uh, value is particle volume fraction then we have particle size then we have particle shape particle material base fluid temperature and then effect of acidity which is pH so these are some uh, parameters on which thermal conductivity of nanofluids really depend so as you saw in the previous slide that we have a uh, compound elements as nanoparticles and then we have its base fluid accordingly so it's really important for these two to match now uh, let me tell you uh, some mechanism of heat transfer improvement so uh, the very first thing which i have got is effect of a brownian motion which is bm so brownian motion intensifies increase in temperature as per the kinetic theory of particles so this is one really interesting and the other one which uh, excites me the most is clustering of nanoparticles so it results in fast heat transport along relatively long distances since heat can be conducted much faster by solid particles compared to liquid right now next we see is conventional solid liquid suspension compared to nanofluids so yes obviously there is solid liquid suspension as compared to nanofluids as well which we uh, regularly use so uh, and these are divided uh, in criteria as according to criteria it's criteria it's conventional and it's nanofluids so the very first observation is stability then we have settle and then again we have stable nanofluids so these are few observations which have been recorded by so far then let's quickly discuss about its application of nanofluids so nanofluids can be used in heat transfers in uh, microelectronics say supercomputers for example then uh, we have pharmaceutical process uh, processes we could use it in medicines and pharma then we have got hybrid powered engines which can be used in uh, big engines say for example engine for ships uh, we have got engines for uh, say airplanes so we can use nanopart nanofluids over there then we have got boiler fuel uh, flu gas temperature reduction then we have domestic refrigerator grinding machining we can even use it in space technologies we can use it for engine cooling as well for engine cooling uh, personally i want to see nanoparticles to be used because obviously yes it's my daily commute uh, let's 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 look out on uh, list of companies which actually are using uh, nanofluids 
so we have got leading indian firms such as uh, you know tata and uh, reliance obviously and it's uh, a children company so adeno technologies andelab technologies tata steel auto fiber craft avansa technology and services daba pharma eris technology uh, mittal enterprises nelima nano technologies quantum corporation or uh, famously called as q corp cisco research laboratories uh, srl uh vajinta india uh wellbiano nanotech uh sevens materials uh inc then we have got redex nano labs now uh we just discussed about uh what are nano foliage you know and how it can be more effective than other suspensions suspension liquids standard solid liquid uh, suspension which we actually use uh, in our day to day lives uh they uh, let me just conclude what exactly and uh, let me tell you what can be the future scope of nanofluids so they are also used in bulk uh they can be used in bulk and other electronic uh, and, uh, and also for uh, you know with um, other micro electronics as i as i just uh, gave you an example of supercomputer so a uh, processor is something uh, is is a kind of an element in computer which uh, really gets heated up when used with graphics so uh, obviously yes uh, for that application as well nanofluids can come in very handy uh, then we can even discuss ill effects of nanofluids like uh, agglomeration and coagulation uh, which could be avoided we can conclude that nanofluid thermal conductivity increases with increment in particle volume fractions and temperature the chaotic movement of nano uh, particle increase fluctuation and turbulence of the fluid which increases the heat exchange process there is always a chance of development some new experimental of new numerical methods which can give the high height in this field i uh, i'd like to thank everyone for this presentation thank you so much have a great day and bye bye